Welcome to Winnie Tales. I'm your host, Julianne Neal, and we're here with Bruce Anderson and friends with all of our favorite horse stories, pony legends, and unicorn yarns. Tune in each week to hear from Bruce with a Nature's View training tip, as well as conversations with some of our favorite horse lovers. Remember, the joy's in the ride. Welcome to episode two of Winnie Tales. Ooh, it's another hot one. (laughs) Yes, it is. At least it's getting close to evening, so it's not as bad. I wasn't expecting 90 degrees or more in October, but I'm inside for most of the day, so you're the one having to brave it with the horses, huh? Well, as I always say, at least you know you're alive. (laughs) That's true. It's when it stops hurting it, you've got a problem. (laughs) Oh, that's very true. Well, I'm excited still about the podcast, and um, I think that we've got a great episode. We're going to be speaking with Lisa Dearson, who is the founder and director of the Equus Film Festival. So, Bruce, what are your thoughts on Equus and how far we've come since we first started with our involvement in 2015? Well, when you ask that question, the first thing that comes to my mind is James O'Connor. Um, it takes me back to that moment when it was time to take what I had in me and try to transform it onto, um, what would you call it, video, uh, visual. Um, and I have to say that <laughs> My hat goes off to James to at least have started the process. Absolutely. Um, because that that in itself was is a lot of stuff, and you don't know what direction to take it in um, or how to present it because it it's difficult to sort of present this work or this journey because there's so many different angles in which you can start at. Um, so yeah, that I, I I go back to that, and then I go back to this need to put it out there to share what the horse has shared with me, which goes back to my need to help the horse to survive in the world we've created, realizing that the horse didn't have a problem. We, I didn't have a problem. I had other people's problems that created a problem within me. So by me getting this out there, I'm able to show the importance of horses in our society more so than ever before. Um, And then from there, it takes me to you and finally you getting to be more involved in the journey that we're on because you played a crucial part in putting all of this together. Um, And one of the big pieces that you did was to get it out to people, you were the main person to get in touch with Lisa, who then has allowed us the opportunity to have a window to share this journey of ours um, with others. Um, Well, I think it'll be exciting. One of our next episodes will definitely involve James O'Connor and having that conversation. And I can't wait to talk to James and Dylan and um, see how far things have come since we first started back in June of 2015. But um, when you think about all the different places that we've been with the Equus Film Festival and the things that we've done, is there anything that stands out to you as something that was particularly special? I mean, there have been so many opportunities. We've pretty much traveled basically all over the states. We've been to the south, Texas. We've been to the west, California. We've been to the northwest, Oregon. We've been to the northeast, Pennsylvania. Um, Where else? We've been to Florida, the far south, and not through the Equus Film Festival, but we've also been to France. Um, again, because of the film. Um, and even Canada. And Yes, and actually, 
the far, far north, Canada. <laughs> well, I thought that one was pretty special because James was actually there and involved with that one. So that was kind of a surprise, a nice surprise. But it was sort of interesting because what are the odds of the film festival being hosted in the same town that James had just moved to from Trinidad to Canada? I mean, what are the odds of that? So it's almost like it was like this omen to let us know that we were on the right path. Exactly. Et cetera, et cetera. So, it yes. It to be. Um, well, and it was special. I think one of the special things was California. To see you giving a demonstration on trailer loading in the LA Equestrian Center. I mean, what... In what other way could we have ever done that? For you to be one of the spot or one of the presenters for the World Equestrian Games at Tryon and listed, you know, as as right in there with all these other big time trainers, I think that's pretty special. I think for me personally, there were two. All of them were special, but the two things that struck me the most was in doing this work. It takes me back to the American Indians and we got to go to Oregon and we were invited to go on tribal land and see the wild horses that they had and interact a little bit with the horses but also the local culture and I would love to go back to that and on the other hand it was kind of neat when I went down to Texas I went down to um to Martha, Texas, but I went to Pervi Presidio. Uh, Presidio. Presidio. And for me personally, that was an interesting journey because that's where all the horses that are being sent to slaughter in Mexico, that is the border crossing. And they go to Presidio and um, they're held there until the trucks come over from Mexico to pick them up. And for me to go there and see these horses, as difficult as it was to see that, um, it's kind of, it was a way to sort of honor them and allow me to push even harder. So it's like, but when I go there and I've seen those horses, this is my way to help them and show that they're passing their journey is not in vain um, because I feel that they are here to put us back in touch with spirit so and I wouldn't have gotten to do that if it wasn't for the Equus Film Festival um, and meet the people that I've met um, Nita from down there um, and there are a number of different people that we met that have sort of influenced our life um, so yeah, it's it's been interesting. It's been quite a journey. So I'm looking very forward to speaking with Lisa in just a few minutes, and um, we will continue the rest of the podcast from there. But special thanks to everyone with the Equus Film Festival, and especially Lisa Dearson. But mainly to you, for me anyway, because if it wasn't for you, um, I wouldn't have had this opportunity to put this out there. So... That was another neat thing about the Equus Film Festival, that you became more involved in this and also in filmmaking because you seem to have found a passion um, on something that you really enjoy doing. And it was fun sort of watching you sort of finally break out from this little mold that you have been in for many years to hopefully find something that you're passionate about and hopefully continue to do. So that's also been, for me, something really cool to see and it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the Equus Film Festival. Well, thank you. That's absolutely so, true and I'm enjoying every minute of it. So, good. Look, looking forward to seeing what comes next. Mm, that's always interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, you're listening to Winnie Tales and we'll be back in a moment. We are so excited today to be speaking with Lisa Dearson, the founder and director of the Equus Film and Arts Fest. Lisa has been connecting equestrian films, literature, and equine art with horse lovers and the general public around the world for many years. I hate to even say how many at this point, but the herd is growing every day. So good morning, Lisa. 
Good morning, Julianne. How are you? I'm doing really well, and I'm going to start with kind of what will sound like a really silly question, but I'll tell you why in a minute. How's the weather where you are? Well, actually, it's partly sunny and just kind of uh, breezy outside. We were supposed to be having terrible rainstorms, but we seem to have dodged the bullet for a while today. Well, that's very good because we seem to always be on opposite ends of the world as far as the weather. You're in Illinois, we're in South Carolina, and it's either like 95 to 105 degrees here or it's snowstorms <laughs> where you are. And so for horse lovers and people trying to get out and just get in a good ride, you never know what we're going to end up with. So for us today, it's 80 and it's beautiful. So it sounds like it's a good, good horse day for you where you are as well. Gosh, that's got to be like winter time for you all. Maybe after your <laughs> well, I, summer. I did wear a sweater this morning, so so that was great. But thank <laughs> you so much for for speaking with us as we as we launched this podcast. Um, we couldn't. Bruce and I were talking about it, and we could not think of a more appropriate person to have in our initial set of of people to speak with. And um, we just we appreciate you and everything you have done for us for horses, for filmmakers, authors, and artists for so long now. And so could you talk a little bit about the Equus Film and Arts Fest? I'm, I'm learning the new title as we speak. So I've been calling it the Equus Film Festival for years now. And uh, so tell us a little bit about what right. you do and um, where you are. Well, we, we're evolving as, as good things should do and grow and evolve. So we're evolving now into not just not just recognizing our films, because we've had art and, and the authors as part of the festival for the past three or four years now. So we've decided to just go ahead and, and incorporate that into the, into the title of the festival when we do the Winnie Awards. So with, our, with going into our new home, which is the Kentucky Horse Park now, um, we decided that might as well kind of give us a fresh new look and, and include our art which are the, the authors and the artists, along with the filmmakers, who are such an important part of this festival. Mm -hmm. I think probably at, since we just sent out our notice to all of our authors, we're going to end up having maybe 10 to 15 authors joining us in Lexington. So that'll be kind of fun and exciting. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, it's, yeah. it's a big switch. You were in New York for quite some time. Is that where you started? Well, we started in St. Charles, Illinois, where I live, in a really nice little theater. And you know the theater because we did a screening of A Pony and His Boy there this year. But we started at the Arcata Theater with what was going to be one film um, of The Horse Boy, which kind of quickly evolved that first year into 30 films. And we went from St. Charles into the next year right into New York. We, we did our first year in New York at, in Harlem in a beautiful little theater, three screen theater, ran three screens of films, had everything from two minute commercials to hour and a half long feature films and documentaries and ran those screens all weekend. So it was, mm -hmm. that was an exciting first, first event, first venture into New York. And then the next year is when I think that you joined the herd. You and Bruce Anderson joined Equus Film Festival, and we were in New York and for the last, we've been in New York for five years, and the Kentucky Horse Park invited us to host our main event at their beautiful new Wrigley Media Theaters at the, at the Horse Park, and we couldn't think of a better place in the heart of horse country mm. to host or have the film festival and the Winnie Awards. And our filmmakers from all over the world are excited about coming to Lexington. And now it's looking like so are the authors and the artists. So we've got quite a, quite a big herd, of, herd coming to, New, to um, Lexington in, in December. Well, I wondered about fun. the response from your international filmmakers because New York has been such a fabulous place and easy for everybody to get to and mm -hmm. lots of fun things to do. But I do think that this, this new venue is, is really special. You're listening to Winnie Tales. This episode of Winnie Tales on the Porch is brought to you by Rosalind Moore and Claire Day Spa, 
Thanks for your support. What's going to be beautiful is that it, it's going to allow us to screen. We've already started um, screening films in the theaters. We'll be, we're running Equus Film Festival films there all year long in the, in the Wrigley Media Theaters. There'll be a different block of featured films that run about three hours, and they'll be rotating those all throughout the day. So if you miss it at one part of the day, you can, you can come back in and wa- sit down and watch it at another part of the day. And what's been nice is when people come into the park and pay their park admission, if they, if they come in, the se- they get their second day free. So what's been happening is a lot of people come back on their free second day into the park and go and, and spend the time watching the films in the theater. So mm-hmm. and that's, that's turned out to be something that we didn't even know was going to happen, but it's, it's been nice. And now the pe- people just coming in and not even knowing that the films are there are able to enjoy those films. So it's an extra treat when you're at the Kentucky horse park all throughout the year. That's so exciting. And I know that over the years, we, like you said, we met you in November 2015, I think, and Mm -hmm. just immediately from the friendship that you showed to both of us, we were like, wherever this festival goes, we want to be a part of it. And so you've given us the opportunity to, you know, for Bruce as a clinician to do a demonstration at the LA Equestrian Center or in Oregon or in Canada or wherever. These have been phenomenal opportunities. So I'm sure the other filmmakers and other people involved in the herd, um, whether they're authors or artists, are all just as appreciative as we are. You know, you've given so many people connections that are made all the time through this. And so that's that's pretty special. Well, we get to be it as I'm watching all of our Facebook pictures that come back, our memories from last year. We were at WAG this time last year, (laughs) dodging the hurricane with all of our Mm -hmm. filmmakers and I had filmmakers there. I had a filmmaker there from the Netherlands that came in and who was making a documentary at the world equestrian games that will happen the film festival this year. That, you know, I mean, that's, that's the reach of this festival. So, and and next year we're going to be at Equitana at the Kentucky horse park. And it'll be an, an opportunity for our filmmakers again to come and, be part of something that's a world-class event. We've done FBI level World Cup jumping and dressage events. We've been all over, all over doing the film festival. So um, we're waiting to hear if we're going to be going to Manipur, India in November. We're still, mm-hmm. we'll know the end of this month. So it, the reach of this film festival is global, but so mm-hmm. is the reach of horses all around the world. It doesn't matter whether it's a story here that we have a wounded warrior story right now, the film that'll be part of the festival called Mustang Saviors, which is using Mustang wild Mustang horses with soldiers suffering from PTSD. That film will will be in at the horse park in December. Well, last year in November, we had a film from Germany using horses with their wounded warrior program heal using the horses to heal soldiers suffering from ptsd this past weekend we sent those films to canada for to be screened at their can praxis which is their the canadian version of their wounded the wounded soldier program and those films from the aquas festival screened at that event so it, it's it's global it's worldwide the horse is helping mm-hmm. people and it's just well, up to us to get that story out there right right and i mean it seems to me like in in a lot of the tour stops that we've attended and that i've seen you know you send out information about that when we're not able to go that horses healing horses helping people people helping horses that's been you know bruce's little catchphrase for for 20 years now and that's what you're promoting as well so what do you think drew you to trying to spread the word about horses as healers i was certified in gala and okay corral theory um in therapeutic use of horses with in equine assisted psychotherapy since since it's since the inception of it being a modality of therapy that's recognized by 
the doctors and the insurance industry and everything else, all, everyone who's been around horses and been close to horses their, during their lifetime know that without even being told that, that ho- there's something that happens when you're with your horse. But um, for, for the film festival, it was watching Rupert Isaacson's documentary, The Horse Boy, and having an overwhelming feeling that I needed to have other people see this documentary so they could learn to empathize with people who are dealing with children who, who have special needs, whether it's autism or Down syndrome or, or whatever. There's not enough empathy when, you see, when you're in a grocery store and you see someone with a kid who's having a temper tantrum. You don't know if that child's autistic or if that parent is having a terrible time. And this documentary addressed that issue in a way using where the horses end up helping Rupert's son find his way back into the world. But it, it, it put it right in our face in a way that only a good documentary can. And so I wanted everybody I knew to see that documentary, which is why I asked Ron, who owns the Arcata Theater, if I could screen it there, because at least then I could have people I knew come in to see it, and and maybe it would change them like it changed me. And that's, you know, just kind of how it evolved, and it evolved into what we did last year with Down syndrome. You know, Josh turned nine this past week. When we did that documentary, wow. he hadn't turned eight yet. He just, you know, he was just mm-hmm. getting ready to turn eight. So, you know, watching, even in my own world, a little 28-year-old throwaway rescue pony who's 30 now, who people just, you know, they just didn't want to have him anymore. So here, take this pony and do whatever. To see how that pony has changed this little boy's life, in such a positive way, you know, yeah, all day yesterday, he spent all day with, at the barn playing with the pony, <laughs> the pony dragging the pony here, the pony going there. It, and that pony, it's given the pony a new lease on life. Definitely. So these things are powerful, and people, it, documentary filmmaking is a way to tell these stories and get them into everybody's home. Everybody has a screen, whether it's your iPhone, your your iPad, your computer, or your television. Everybody has a screen. So now we have a way to get these stories to people. You are listening to Winnie Tales. We thank you for your support. You mentioned Josh, and for the people who may not know anything about that story, um, we you you mentioned the story of Josh and Barry to me a year and a half, I guess, ago, before WEG, and um, it seemed to be something that you thought would make a good documentary, and you had all of this original footage on your iPhone. Did you mm-hmm. envision it becoming as big a story as it was when you first thought about it? Um. I know how powerful the storytelling method is, filmmaking, and I actually wasn't even worried about the fact that part of this is shot on iPhone because one of the – I watched a documentary uh, maybe six months before that that had come from Iran, and it was about girls who were trying to be – to get themselves out in the world under Taliban rule. And these three girls told their film through iPhone, told their story through their iPhone. And that, mm. so they were able to get those files out and that those files were put together into a documentary. So the story get, can be told no matter, as long as it's visual that way. So the, the iPhone footage, I, every time I watch it, I'm, I'm left a little bit, but you know, that's what makes a documentary real. And I knew that you had the ability to be able to weave the story together correctly that would make it so powerful. And when we took it to the Down Syndrome Congress and people were crying watching this documentary, I knew that you had been able to do your job as a filmmaker. 
Well, it, I really appreciate the fact that you trusted the story with me in the first place because it's it's a special one, and um, I I really appreciate that. So, and you've had so many other. Um, I don't want to say causes, but so many other issues that you've addressed through the festival. So you've had the horses helping people and healing and, you know, that sort of thing. But then you've also had this, the topics of um, soaring with Tennessee walkers in the show world mm -hmm. or with the carriage horses or with horse slaughter. I mean, over the years, I've just seen so many things where you've tried, you've addressed true change. I mean, mm -hmm. with with the spotlight rescue series we've been able to take stories that are the havasupai horses people think that the havasupai falls is such a beautiful place to go i didn't have any idea until we worked on that documentary just how horrible the abuse was to those animals so mm -hmm. you can't once you see something and you know it you you can't just sit back and not do anything about it. And we mm -hmm. happen to have the ability to tell these stories and get them out to the world through the power of good filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the, either with Soaring or with Nita, with Nita Rain, with, the, um, you know, the, from, uh, the stories about the horse slaughtering. And, mm -hmm. I mean, Under there's just... Thundering Hoofs organization and what she's doing, you know, bringing children into into helping create the change. We're seeing that happen right now in real time with our environment, with, you know, the young lady from the Netherlands that came over on, you know, she's starting a movement. The, you just, you have to be part of the solution. You can't be part of the problem. And right, you know, right. we, we have the ability to be part of that solution within the mm, world exactly. of horses. And, I mean, I can tell that you, I think all of us, but especially you, take that very seriously. And um, I can't imagine you stepping back and not doing that. I mean, I, I feel like it seems to me this is your life calling. Well, I love horses. So, truly right. love horses. I mean, it, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter the breed, although I... I'm a little partial to my Lusitanos, but, <laughs> it, you know, it, it can be a mini horse. It can be, we just got a great mini horse documentary that's coming to the film festival. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. It's just, you're going to, you'll cry when you watch it. Um, <laughs> it but, and then it does, or to draft horses or, you know, what can bring you to tears and make you laugh and make you cry again and then make you smile and happy better than a Budweiser minute long <laughs> commercial with one of those big beautiful Clydesdales. That's storytelling through film. Right. You know, and, and right. it can be powerful like that. And if you can get those positive messages across that way, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what the breed of horse it is. People connect with the horses in a way that's right. different than dogs or cats or anything else. The horses just are different. Definitely. Well, you mentioned Lusitanos. What, when did you first become interested in the breed? Was there one particular horse that drew you in, or you just done it for a while? Oh, no, it's Urano drew me in, uh, the, the stallion that I have now. But he, um, he's just a special boy. I, I think he's your horse's mini-me. But um, <laughs> he's, a, he's a gray. Um, the idea of having uh, your horse as your dancing partner can, truly, truly happens with this breed. They seem to be super intuitive and super connected to the person that they, that, that is their person uh, in a way that I haven't, uh, you know, Mustang horses can connect that way. It's, it's kind mm -hmm. of a spiritual connection that, with the horse and the rider. It's almost like you you sit on them and you plug into them. But you can be doing it on the ground. I mean, that's why they use the Lusitanos in shows like Cavalia or with Bartibus in France. Um, all of these, all the big shows, the theatrical shows, use Lusitanos or Lipizans. There's sometimes, the, like Medieval Times with Mario uses the Andalusian. They're a smarter, super intuitive horse. So... And I know everybody who has other breeds 
loves their breed, but this is the breed I love. So, I, and I love all horses, though. So. Right, right. Hard. Well, <laughs> I remember when you mentioned to me that you recognized a particular horse in a film that's out in the mm. public right now. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, we got the last December, I got the first feed on the trailer that was released for the Mustang film before it went to Sundance, which uh-huh. is a docu- or it's not a documentary, it's a feature film about using horses in a prison system, which I think is an amazing use of horses. We're very close to a, a, a gentleman whose name is Randy Helm, who runs the prison system horse program in Arizona, and he's done an amazing job. But it, this film is a way to get that story out there that Mustang, these Mustang horses partnered with the, with the um, prisoners is a great way to help acclimate, get the prisoners to connect again. And so when I was watching that trailer, the, the buckskin horse they were using as the star horse, because again, it is, it's a feature film. So you have to have a horse that knows how to do these things and you can act with the horse. The horse has to be able to act. I, and I just, mm-hmm. I knew the horse and um, sure enough, it ended up being my friend Alicia Zope's um, Mustang horse from his show, um, Maceo. So it was, <laughs> and again, we're going to be working on, uh, you're going to have it for the festival, a little short documentary about the horse that's part of the movie, kind of like, you know, finding out who's the horse in the Black Stallion. You know, it's always mm-hmm. nice to find out the story of the horse that has created that that actor role. Right. It's and and I mean, you've had horses to do that. Exactly. You've had horses even walking around New York City who were actors in mm-hmm. films. And it's always I, amazing to me to see what they can do and, you know, what, what people well, are able to work with them. Oh. We had a mini horse in the movie theater sitting in a chair with the little <laughs> apple who, who was in the film um, Apple of My Eye about using miniature horses as guide horses for seeing eye ponies. And then we had Dreamer, who a great YouTube clip to, to find online is called Dreamer's Day Out in New York. And Lindsay Partridge, who is Dreamer's trainer, and Dreamer's been in a few movies now, feature movies, had Dreamer all over New York City and made this cute little film of Dreamer going by Trump Tower and by the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I mean, she just had Dreamer all over. And without a bridle, without a lead rope, she had a rope tied around his neck, and that's how he walked around New York. I mean, New York City, you can have a horse anywhere in New York as long as you ha- have con- a way to control that horse. Mm. And so you can walk a horse up and down the street in New York which is what we, we've had. We had dreamers standing out in front of the movie theater probably for two hours, and people thought he was a, a statue horse because he was such a good boy, but he's a trained right. professional. Well, I always think it's so special when you're in, in New York and you see the horses anyway, whether it's the carriage mm-hmm. horses or, you know, um, the, the, well, we had the police, police horses coming, there. <laughs> yeah, coming down and standing out in front. And I'll tell you what, it's definitely a draw. It really is. Mm-hmm. So for this year, for the Film and Arts Fest at the Horse Park, are there more than films? Would people be, if somebody's just showing up, what would they find when they arrive? You'll meet all these authors. You'll get to meet with, uh, I think we have five artists coming in. We have an artist coming in from Canada. His name's Mark Grice. Mark, again, is, a, written, is another author. He wrote a book called Paint the Horse Blue, but he was also the headwater in, Canada, in Ontario, Canada. He was the headwaters um, artist of the year, and he's going to mm-hmm. bring some of his equine artwork down. And then we have some musicians who will be with us who've done um, for their last ride. We're going to have um, Gareth will be in, Lafferty will be with us doing some of his music, horse music, and I'm sure Jar won't let anybody else get on that stage unless he can get up there. And <laughs> <laughs> so we've got and Melody, um, it, Melody will be in, and mm-hmm. um, so we've got, you know, we've got some fun stuff that will be happening, and we have panels. So we're going to have some 
pretty interesting panels addressing some of the horse issues, whether it's slaughter, we're going to be talking about the Mustangs. We have, we're partners with the Mustang Heritage Foundation, all different kinds of horse issues. And we'll, we'll address, even though we're going to be kind of in the heart of Kentucky and in, in the heart of Tennessee horse country, we will be addressing the soaring issue down there. So, um, mm-hmm. and, and talking with some saddlebred people who will be coming to talk about the differences so that people understand what gated horses can really do versus gated horses that are abused to get them to, you know, to do the big mm-hmm. lick, which is what, what we're trying to stamp out. But, you know, so we'll, you'll be able to sit through, through panels. We'll have panels going all throughout the weekend. So, it, you know, it's, it's a, f- a fun weekend. There's a lot to do, a lot to meet and, Hopefully there'll be some good food there as well, from what I'm hearing. So <laughs> it'll be a lot that of fun. That sounds for awesome. The visits. Right, and it's funny, I, Bruce and I've been so lucky, as we said before, with with ha- being able to travel around with you and to meet all these people. So hearing you list off all the the people coming in, it it feels like the herd coming back home. It really does. And we've worked together. It's it's been great to meet people who have similar. Um, interests and, and similar causes that we're behind and we you know together we're able to accomplish a lot more and so I think I think it's going to be a really exciting time and we can't wait to be there can't wait to see you again so what's up next for you is there anything else exciting before the December date Do you have anything fun planned well we're doing the Certified Horsemanship Association um, we'll be screening some films for that in October up in uh, northern, northwestern New York State, and then hopefully we'll be heading to Manipur, India, in November, mm-hmm. and then right to the festival in December. Wow! So you're a busy so, lady. And, you're traveling a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and working on getting our our on demand platform going. So um, exactly, you know, the Equus Channel now. So we're Equus Channel is available through Horse Network. Um, we've partnered with Horse Network, which is really and ended up being kind of a super partnership. They have such a great audience, and so we're able to bring our films to to that platform. And then moving on, you know, moving it along to bringing, you know, people will be able to not only see all the good stories that are on Horse Network, but they'll be able to click right to the Equus Film Channel. That's great. That's really great. So it's like a festival, film festival online that mm-hmm. you can just see it on demand. So that's what we've been excited about is being able to get some of Bruce's training films up. And, of course, that original documentary, The Edge, um, that we were working on when we first met. So it's, right. we've come a long way. <laughs> and it just keeps evolving into bigger and better things. It really does. It really does. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, and we really look forward to seeing where this journey goes and where it, where it takes us next, and um, we appreciate you letting us be along for the ride. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for coming along for the ride. You're listening to Winnie Tales, the official podcast of Nature's View and the Marley Project, brought to you by JA Media Productions.